All right, guys, yesterday we worked on exponential growth, so today we're going the opposite, going exponential decay, seeing how things decay and the decay rate and that sort of stuff. So here we go. Big formula today is X, the decay formula. It looks just like yesterday, except for one major exception, and that is our decay rate. If It's the same formula, except our K, our rate, is a negative rate. That's what makes it go down. Again, K is a decay rate. T is time. E is 2.71828. P sub zero is initial population or initial amount of whatever it is you're is decaying. Okay, decay rate and half life. Um, half life works just like uh, how long it takes something to double. So except your K is going to be negative. So looks like this. The way we're going to find the rate is that to see how long it takes. We're going to use that one, and that's where we're going here. On our, I'm going to show you two examples, and that's all. And the first one we're going to use this one. The second one we're going to use the other one. So here we go. It says the radioactive element C14, carbon-14, has a half-life of 57, 50 years. You might know that from chemistry. The percentage, or biology, the percentage of carbon-14 present in the remains of organic matter, matter can be used to determine the age of that organic matter. Archaeologists discovered that the linen wrapping from one of the Dead Sea Scrolls had lost 22.3% of its C14 at the time it was found. How old was the linen wrapping? Right, the first thing we need to do is figure out what our... A decay rate is so I'm going to find K so I'm going to say K equals natural log 2 divided by T and I know what T is I know the time the half-life time is 5750 years so I'm going to do um, natural log 2 divided by 5750 I get 0.00012 now all that is is that's my decay rate now I'm going to plug that in my formula so I'm going to have P of T equals P sub zero times e to the negative point zero 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 one two of t, t power. So I'm looking for the time. Okay, so what I'm going to do is basically I know this is how much is left. I know twenty two point three percent is what was left, which means if I started with a hundred right here, if I started and I'm just making this up, and sometimes that's what you got to do. If you started with a hundred, um, whatever milligrams, whatever, you know, however you want to study this, e to this power, because there's only 23% left, you're going to end up, you're going to end up with 0 0.223, actually, nope, you're ending up with 77.7 .7 out of that 100, and I can't find my eraser, sorry about that, there it is, you're ending up with 77.7 .7 of that 100. So what I'm going to do is divide both sides by 100. I'm putting 0 0.777 over here equals e to the negative 0 0.00012 t power. Um, and what we're going to find out as we go along, whatever they tell you is, is lost, whatever's left, you can go ahead and put that decimal over here or percent over here, what's left, because that's what that stands for. Okay, to solve this, because there's an e, I'm going to do natural log of each side, which means on my right-hand side, I just get negative 0 0.00012 t. Over here, I have natural log of 0.777. So what I'm gonna to do to solve this, to get my T, how long it took, I'm gonna do natural log of 0.777 and divide that by negative 0.00012. And we'll punch that in. I get 2,103 a years. How old was that wrapping? A very old, like 2,100 years old. That's old, by the way. So you gotta find your, um, Unit or rate of decay first. Once you find that, we're going to plug it in the formula over here. Is always you can kind of think about this side as what's left, what's left over. Okay, last one. The number in of farms in the U.S. has declined continually since 1950. In 1950, there were 55.6 million farms, and in 2008, that number had decreased to 2.2 million. Assuming that the number of farms decreased according to exponential decay model, find the value of K and write the function, and then part B, estimate the number of farms. And so we're going to use the formula we find in part A to solve part B. So part A, um, we started off with 2.2, um, let's see, 5.6 million farms. I'm getting this backwards. I told you how much is left goes on the other side, goes on that side. So we there are now just 2.2 million farms started with, which goes over here, 5.6 million. We have e to the negative k t power. Now we did this time. We know what t is. We went from 1950 to 2008. 
that's 58 years. So to solve for K, I'm first of all, I'm going to divide both sides by um, 5.6, 102.2 divided by 5.6 on my calculator, which gives me 0.393, and that equals E to the negative K times 58 power. And because I have the E, you know I'm about to go. Whenever I have an E and I'm stuck with it, I'm going to do natural log of both sides. And when I do that, I get natural log of 0.393 equals basically negative 58K. So my K is going to equal whatever natural log 3.393 divided by negative 58. So I'm going to punch that in. Natural log of 0.393. Close my parentheses. Divided by negative 58. And I get 0 0.016 for my K. 0 0.016. There's my K. So my function then is going to look like this. It's going to be P of T equals, um, start with 5.6, 5.6E negative 0.016t. Okay, now this one says estimate the number of farms in 2011. So I'm going to say, okay, in 2011, which means I'm plugging in 2011 in for my t. I'm going 5.6e negative 0.016. I think I just spoke wrong. I'm not plugging in 2011. I don't, I don't know how many years it took to get from 50, 1950 to 2011. Well, it took 61 years. So instead of putting 2011 there, I should have put 61. So I'm plugging 61 in for my time because that's so much time passed. And I'm going to punch that just straight into my calculator. 5.6e to the negative 0 0.016 times 61. Hit enter, and I get this. I got 2.11 million. Should put it over here. 2.11 million farms in 2011. Okay, that's how many are left. So it didn't go down a whole lot from 2008. I actually dropped, well, almost dropped another 100,000 in three years. So it's still decreasing. Hope that makes some sense. You're really just following the formulas. Usually you have to find K first, your decay rate, and then we're going to use it to find something else. And what we'll do tomorrow is we'll do a lot of decay problems, but also kind of mix them in with growth so you get a good review of both. And hopefully we'll be good. See you then.